Good morning and welcome this wonderful Easter Sunday. He is risen. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you all your smiling faces and everybody in their Easter finest. So everybody will take their obligatory family Easter pictures. The one time of year you all looked good together. Amen. But uh, we had a great, great turnout this morning at the sunrise service. We had uh, 40 plus people and we had nearly 30 people here for fellowship and food and munchies and uh, warming up after the service. It was a great time. I want to share a few other announcements with you, and then we'll prepare our hearts for worship. Uh, our midweek Bible study will resume at 7 o'clock this Wednesday with Pastor Dan. Trustees will meet on Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And also looking for people to participate Musically, if you have musical giftings, please see Tim Krebs. There's going to be a date in the month of May. We're going to have an all musical service, so we need bodies. We need you to help make that a successful time of worship. Also, chicken barbecue, there's sign up sheets in the vestibule. Make sure you're signing up to make cakes, bring, bring supplies, and sell your tickets. And if you need more tickets, please see John Klinger because we need to have a great turnout for April 30th, one of the highlights of our year. We do that twice a year. And it's a real blessing to many and a great time of fellowship. Um, Grandpa's is tentative for Tuesday, so Johnny Miller will... Paid holiday on Tuesday. I'm now re-informed. So drink your coffee at home and you'll reconvene the following week. So with that, is there any other announcements before we prepare our hearts for worship? Adam? <laughs> and with that, you can turn your Bibles to Psalm 73 as we have the prelude and the lighting of the candles. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Would you please rise with me and we're going to sing our praise songs. First one is Oh How He Loves You and Me.
technical difficulties. All right, all right, ready to go now. Okay. <laughs> Take two. Take two. <laughs> Spencer will come forward and help me out with this time of our service. This is our opportunity to lift our praises to the Lord. The Bible says in Philippians 4.4, 4, to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And what better day to rejoice than the day that we celebrate that he is risen. He is risen indeed. So this is your opportunity to give glory and honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. Who would like to share first the blessing that they've received this week? We were blessed on Good Friday with my family came home. There's 17 of us. First great grand, first time I saw my one great grandchild. 
My family all lived away, you know, so what are you going to do? But I thank most of all for our church family, the love that we have here. Amen. Thank you, Buzz. Anyone else? I'm thankful to have three sons back in my house. <laughs> And I'm also thankful for all the people who brought eggs. We had 450 Easter eggs. And the only small child we had was Grant Hopta. So he had his pick of the litter and then we uh, shared with the bigger kids. So thank you all for the Easter eggs and all of your support. And the highlight, you'll have to look for pictures from Eric. If you can see Jonathan Hopta with Grant, it is absolutely precious. On Friday, I had a bladder scan, and I turned out I don't have cancer anymore. Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Over here with Mark. He said he beat it. He did. Well, just what I uh, mentioned at uh, Ealysburg uh, Boy Scout Troop. 247, uh, kind of uh, with the Troop 250, we passed the cross to them and they came up in numbers, 18 uh, Boy Scouts uh, camped out and uh, they are gonna carry the cross now. That is gonna be part of their annual uh, programming. So we wanted to thank all the people from Ealersburg and everybody to come up and support it, Mr. Hopta for making the hot dogs. Anyone else? I don't know what I'd do without you, Spence. I'm um, thankful because I go visit my family and see my nanny and pap. Amen. <laughs> Spencer's looking around, um, my family, I got to see my family, I don't see, they live about five hours away and they met us in Baltimore on Friday um, prior to play, being able to coach at the Holy Grail of lacrosse. I got to coach at Hopkins on Friday night and Braden was on the field with me and there was a moment in pregame warmups where he looked around and he said, I'm on Hopkins Field and it was just really, really awesome and what made it even more awesome is that we smacked the Methodists down, we beat Drew pretty good. So that was, that was pretty good too. So um, just a special day being with family and then being able to coach in the Holy Grail of lacrosse. Being at Homewood Field is kind of like being at Penn State Stadium. It's very, very like ominous and we, it was just a blessing. Anyone else? And with me today, one of the people who got to ride down with me, sit next to my wife is Kalina and her mother visiting. She's one of the sports information directors at Susquehanna University and uh, she puts up with all our shenanigans and tries to figure out all the stuff that we give them and they do a great job making it through all of that. Yes, John? Yeah, I'd just like to say thank to Johnny Miller for starting the tradition of the cross. Amen. 55 years. That's quite a feat. And, uh, We've had two crosses up there since then, and next year we're going to have an even bigger and better cross than ever because of the wind damage that we had to the cross. So it's going to be like 22 feet tall instead of 17 feet. It's going to be like 13, 14 feet across, and hopefully it's going to be cast out of solid aluminum, and it should last forever. So Amen. something that Johnny started and our church started, so thank you. 55 years I'm going. What a blessing. For those who might not be aware, when you come up 61 as you're heading towards Sunbury and you see that cross, that is quite a powerful testimony that Boy Scouts from, from this, this troop 55 years ago took that up there and the tradition has continued with the services at the cross and many people's lives have been touched through that ministry. So with that, I'll turn it over to our leaders as we join in our greeting. By his strength, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Praise the Lord. Please rise and read responsibly with me the greeting. 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives believes in me will never die. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh Lord, your wondrous birth means nothing less. Your death and sacrifice means nothing unless we die to sin. Your resurrection means nothing if you be risen alone. Raise and exalt us, O Savior, both now to the state of grace and hereafter to the state of glory, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, God forever and ever. Amen. And please remain standing. And join us in our first hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Good morning. Good morning. Everybody looks so nice. Hi. Today I'd like to read you a story. It's called, What is Easter? The little bunny hops, hops, hops. Is this what Easter means? Is it about the Easter eggs and filled with jelly beans? Is Easter about hunting eggs? I do that every year. Does it mean eating chocolate stuff? Did you eat your bunny's ear? Yes, Mia did. Is it about the baby chicks? They're fuzzy and they're fun. I saw some Easter chicks for sale. I really wanted one. Is it about the Easter toys? They're really fun, I think. Yeah. One time a bunny came to me and his little nose was pink. Is it about my brand new dress and my new Easter hat? Does it mean wearing shiny shoes? I really do love that. Who has shiny shoes on? Mia? Me. Parker? Anna? Is it about a big parade with lots of pretty floats? Is it about the Easter choir? They sing the highest notes. No, that's not what Easter means. Easter means much more than that. It's all about God's Son. See, God sent Jesus down to earth to die for everyone. He had to die upon a tree to save us from our sin. But he was only dead three days and then he rose again. Now that's what Easter really means. It's quite a special day. Jesus, our Savior, rose again. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Today he sits right next to God in heaven up above. He wants to live inside you too and fill you up with love. Okay, now I get it. The Easter bunny is okay and Easter eggs are fun. But Easter's not about that stuff. It's all about God's Son. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to die for us. And we all look forward to that day when we can spend eternity in heaven right next to Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Those who are sick with cold and allergies. Um, for my friend Sherry, who's battling addictions and wisdom for her husband, Pastor Steve, for where Sherry will be um, released to as she completes detox. Um, for Jake, an SU lacrosse player who's battling a concussion. For Karen and Pete, Anne Marie and Jeff, John, Mike. And Jared, for prayers for Brian, prayers for Julia Tressler and her family. She'll be taking off a breathing machine this afternoon. Are there any other requests or things that we need to lift before the Lord today? Spencer? Amen. And one of the verses I share with you often is uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Very powerful verse, a lot of truths in it. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with thanksgiving in your heart. Present your prayers and petitions before the Lord. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will be upon you. So let us go boldly before the throne of grace as we present 
our prayers and petitions with thanksgiving in our heart. Eternal God, we count an honor and a privilege to boldly come before the throne of grace. And we thank you that you know our every need before we ask in our ignorance and asking. And Lord God, today we bring these prayers and petitions before you with thanksgiving in our heart. And we present them believing for the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Lord God, we lift up those who are in need of a healing touch. We thank you that there is healing in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. And for, Lord God, for those who have experienced loss, we thank you that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And, Lord, we do come against the bondages and strongholds of addiction, and we thank you that for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you are the God who still heals, who still delivers, has the power to set the captive free. And Lord God, we thank you for this day we celebrate the miracle of the resurrection, that the tomb was empty. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that's bestowed upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to have right relationship with God through your son, Jesus. We ask you to have your way in this service, that we would give you all glory, honor, and praise. And let us now pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us continue with our worship, with our giving, as the ushers come forward to receive our morning tithes and offerings.
pray with me. God of all ages, you have emptied the tomb and set us free from our burdens. Hope has overshadowed our fear. Comfort has replaced neglect. Faith has gained victory over doubt. The bounds of everyday living, often overwhelming our souls and weakening our spirits, are liberated by Jesus Christ. Today, we recommit to offering comfort, hope, and faith as your generous disciples to others who are driven by fear, neglect, and doubt. We offer these gifts in honor of your Easter promise. Alleluia and amen. At this time, we'll have special music by Rob Ensinger. Scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple 
the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Throughout the past week, I've asked the question of myself over and over again, where am I in the story? And this morning at sunrise service, we talked about the scenes of the resurrection. And today I want to kind of look at it from a little different angle and come at it in, from a more analytical perspective and look at it as the seven questions of the resurrected Christ. And there's a great dialogue that takes place in the text today. And I'll, I'll give you the seven questions up front so I won't leave you hanging and then we'll cover them. So if you're taking notes and following along, I'll give them to you up front so there's no surprises. But I want to start with this thought. And I came across this cartoon this morning and how would we find out about the resurrection today? If the resurrection happened today, it would have to do with, he's not in there. Oh, wait. He's changed his status to risen. Has anyone else unfortunately found out either good news or bad news, family news driven, that they didn't hear it directly, but they heard it on social media? Social media, as much as I love it, can be a blessing. It can also be a curse. And this cartoon, whoops, there we go. This cartoon kind of shows how we live life today, that we're an instantaneous microwaved society, and we want to know news, and we want to know exact black and white. And they look at their tablet, they're, they're gathered around, they go, I missed it. He changed his status. Well, let us look back in time and kind of put ourselves in the story, and I'll give you the seven questions that we'll cover. Why 
are you weeping? The second one is, whom are you seeking? The third is, what are you talking about? The fourth is, are these not things that are already said in Scripture? Then the fifth one, children, do you have any food? The sixth, do you love me? And the seven, if he stays alive till I come, what does it matter to each one of us? So let's kind of jump in with why are you weeping? And we see that in the text today. We see this woman who is just so distraught because she comes and Jesus is not there. She was weeping in her ignorance of the resurrection of Jesus. See, Jesus had already risen from the dead. There was no reason for her to be weeping. She should have been rejoicing. But much like the cartoon, I, I, I picture the disciples gathered outside the tomb and they're like looking at one another and they're going, the story changed. He's not here. So they look down at their iPad and it goes, he is risen. See, sometimes we get so far ahead of ourselves that we miss the blessing and the power of the cross. And sometimes we forget the promises of God and the power of God. And in that midst, we are drawn into sorrow when we should be rejoicing. Jesus is asking us, why are you weeping when I'm alive? I have risen. I'm here to help you. I'm here to deliver you. I'm here to set the captive free. But we get ahead of ourselves. And then the John 20, 15 says he asked her in the text today, woman, why are you crying? And then the next part of the question was, who is it? you're looking for see whom are you seeking what are you looking to gain what kind of perspective are you looking to gain as they gathered outside the tomb see jesus asked this woman who are you seeking she was seeking a dead jesus in a tomb when he had already risen from the dead the god we seek is not dead and powerless or helpless we serve a living almighty powerful god who will never leave us nor forsake us and that's good news as we went through holy week and particularly thursday night when we reenacted the last supper and that's a very solemn service because it's kind of designed for us to put us in the story we gathered around the table we had tables set up here we served communion family style and we had dramatic readings from several people who helped participate in that service and we tried to put ourselves in the story and Buzz and I were reflecting about that Buzz said to me before the service he said you know in Clark's Grove it's so hard to kind of create that reverence or that kind of holy hush because we're social people here at Clark's Grove. There's always a buzz here at Clark's Grove and many times you see me stand up there and it's, it's always unique to me. I stand up there and I, I wonder how long I could go before Rob hits the, the bells to kind of signal that it's time to enter into worship. And I think that if I really let it go, I, it would go five or 10 minutes and most of you wouldn't even realize I was up there, amen? because you're all kind of caught up in your own little world, amen? And that's a good thing because it's an opportunity where we gather and we fellowship and we live life together. And when we gather here on Sunday morning, we really can experience the miracle and the power of the resurrection. See, that's God's desire and our, his heart for us is that we would no longer live in despair, but we would live in hope of the resurrection. See, Galatians 2.20 says that we are crucified with Christ. We no longer live, yet Christ lives in us. And he lives in us when we've accepted him as Lord and Savior. He goes on when he says, who is it you're looking for? What are you talking about? See, Jesus asks 
the disciples on the way to Emmaus, what are you talking about, which makes you so sad? See, the disciples here were confused about the whole situation after the crucifixion of Jesus. See, they were ignorant of his resurrection and were still in deep sorrow and pain and disappointment. Their whole conversation was probably very depressing, somewhat confusing, but Jesus wanted to help them out of this depressing conversation. And sometimes we can get caught up in that. We often, and we all have those friends that as soon as you ask them how their day is, sometimes you regret ever asking that question, amen? Can you all identify with me for just a second? Sometimes you just wish you hadn't asked because you know you're going to get the diatribe and the litany. And um, I owe my wife big time. I love my family, but some of you have heard, my family put the fun in dysfunction. And God bless my wife. She sat next to my mom when we had lunch on Friday, and I got the look. See, I was at the other end of the table. I was smart. But you know what I'm talking about. See, God's desire is that we would experience this resurrection power, but sometimes we just get caught up in the doldrums and woe is me, and sometimes we're a little more like Eeyore, woe is me, this is the way it's always been, this is the way it's always going to be. And see, I believe that that's how the disciples were responding when they were caught up with confusion. When I really believe the church should be full of more tiggers, a little more bounce, 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 and a little more energy, amen? But we all have our Eeyores when we really need to be with the tiggers. See, their whole conversation was depressing and confusing, and sometimes we talk endlessly about our trials and those things which we do not understand. This only makes us sad. Let Jesus reveal the truth to us which has made us glad. And one of the authors that has been really blessing me lately is John Gordon and wrote the book, New York Times bestseller, The Energy Bus. And Braden and I have had the experience of spending some time with him the last few summers as he comes to one of the camps we attend. And his whole premise is, is getting the right people on the bus. And the right people starts with Jesus. And then you need the energy people, not the energy vampires. So sometimes you need to remove the energy vampires that suck the life out of you and make sure you have the right people on the bus so you can move forward. And John's written a lot of books about um, organizational structure and, and leadership development. And he's a great author and just really passionate about people overcoming adversity and not being sucked into adversity. And see, here on this Resurrection Sunday, I think that we all come here because we know that he is risen. He is risen indeed. But as we go through Holy Week, sometimes we kind of forget about the sacrifice and the price that was paid because we don't like to be sucked down and be in the downers. We want to experience resurrection and power. But Christ had to go through all of that for us. Luke 24, 17 says, for this question, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And the disciples stood still. Their faces were downcast. See, the next question was, are these things not foretold in the scriptures? Jesus had asked his disciples, are these things already foretold by the prophets, they were foolish and slow of heart to believe what had already been prophesied. Many times we are confused and we're perplexed because we do not search the scriptures diligently. diligently. The answers, the explanations, the warnings, the predictions, they've been revealed in the word of God. But we suffer needless fears and worries because we fail to believe the scriptures, we fail to dig into the scriptures, and the enemy, Satan, loves to bring fear upon us. That's one of his greatest traps, because fear is the total polar opposite of faith. And the enemy loves to bring worry. And I'm 
surrounded by a family of warriors. My grandmother, who went to be with the Lord last year, had it all. She had a great life, but she was consumed by worry. And she took that to the grave. She was always worried about something or someone or provision, and everything was already laid out for her. See, Luke 24, 26 says, Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? The next question is, children, do you have any food? Jesus had asked the disciples on the sea, children, do you have any food? These disciples had gone back to fishing, and they had failed miserably. See, Jesus met these disobedient disciples and loving and inquired about their welfare. In fact, he even did a miracle for them. He didn't condemn them in anger for going back to fishing. He lovingly restored them back to himself and help them in their difficulty. See, the Lord wants to restore those who have gone away from him and help them in their difficulties. And John 21, 5 says, And Jesus said to him, Children, have you any food? And they answered, No. And then the le- second to last one, Do you love me? And many of us are familiar with the passage the conversation between Jesus and Simon Peter. Jesus asked Simon Peter, do you love me? Three times this question was asked. Peter, who had denied Jesus three times. And when Peter replied that he loved Jesus, he was given a responsibility to serve the Lord. The Lord wants us to love him first. And as a result of our love for him, our actions should follow. Our actions should be motivated out of our love for God, not because of something we would gain because we did something. It's not a works righteousness mentality, but it's because we love God that we would serve him with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. John 21, 15 says, So after they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. See, our love for God, their sacrifice in serving. And in this day and age, it's so different than the old days. I mean, I love listening to the older saints and tell stories when everything revolved around Sunday worship. The life of faith was more important than many, many things. And there was a time when stores weren't open on Sundays. There was a time where children's activities didn't take over Sunday mornings. There was a time when sports didn't rule and reign. And I love sports, but I also see the destruction to the family system through sports. Dr. Fred Opie, who's a professor at Babson University, who's done a lot of research on this, and we've been talking back and forth as I've contemplated this, and the question that we keep asking ourselves is, what happened to the family dinner? And back in the day, family dinners took place every night of the week. And how many kids today are raised going through the drive-thru running from here to there because we're drawn into the world system and we think we got to have our kid enrolled in everything so that they can get ahead. Whereas there's something about community and sitting around and breaking bread and living life together. And I believe Jesus desires for each one of us as we celebrate the miracle and the power of the resurrection that we can go back to some of those olden ways because there's a lot of power in breaking bread together and living life and asking questions how your day was. But unfortunately, what happens at at, at many dinner tables? No communication, because everybody's looking down at their phone. Some of you are convicted, that's okay. Maybe you've seen the funny, funny tales where you go out to eat and everybody puts their cell phones in the middle of the table and the first one who grabs their cell phone has to pay the bill. Do you know how hard that is for some people? Some of you would fail miserably. Do you love him? 
If you love him, your heart's desire should be to serve and honor and glorify him. And then the, the last point is, if he stays alive till I come, what does it matter to you and to me? See, Jesus had asked Simon Peter not to worry about his plan for John. Jesus revealed to Peter about his future and how he would die. But Peter was curious about what would happen to John. And Jesus replied, Peter, you need not worry about God's plan for John. And he wanted Peter to follow him. Jesus doesn't want our wa us to waste our time and our energy in trying to understand his plan for others, even though we can get caught up in that, and particularly parents. Parents get consumed about worrying about their children. And I'll give you a promise, and this is one that we hold on to in our family. If you wait, raise the child in the admonition of the Lord, they will not depart from their ways. And that's a great promise to hold on to. And hopefully that speaks to somebody's heart today that maybe you have a child that's wandering or wavering, but if you did everything in your power and you honored the Lord and you love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, that promise will come to fruition. It might not look good now, but there's hope, and we experience that hope today as we celebrate the power of the resurrection. See, so many times we waste so much energy on worry and it consumes us and Satan plays games with us but he wants us to concentrate on following him and fulfilling his plan in our lives see in John 21 22 Jesus said to him that he remains till I come what is that to you you follow me and that's the message today we know the story the tomb was empty. We have resurrection power right there before us. And perhaps you've been in church all your life. Maybe you're one who knows all the right things to say, all the right things to do, but maybe you've never truly experienced the love of God. God loves you so much that he doesn't desire you to be stuck. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness. But he's long-suffering towards each and every one of us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's heart. And today, what better day than Easter Sunday to say yes to the Lord and no to the things of this world. Eternal God, we thank you for the hope, the power of the resurrection. And Lord God, I just pray for those that are gathered together today that in a moment when we sing because he lives, perhaps someone would say yes to you, that they would recommit their lives to you and say, Lord, I'm going to love you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. Lord, we thank you for the promise that because you live, we can face tomorrow. We praise you for the opportunity to gather on this Easter Sunday to lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise, and let the church say, amen. Would you stand and sing with me, Because He Lives? And as we're singing, Because He Lives, the altars are open. If you'd like to spend some time with the Lord, if you'd like special prayer, perhaps you need to lay some burdens down. Today is the day of salvation. He's here to meet with you. He's here to meet with you right where you are because he loves you that much. Let us sing because he lives.
thank you all for worshiping with us today. And remember to pick up your Easter flowers as you depart and greet each other with the love of Christ. And may each of you experience resurrection power as we celebrate this Easter season. Would you sing with me, More Like You? steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power, and may peace be your way in the world, and let the church say, Amen. Amen.